you are on good terms with Allah. Why? Because if you're not on good terms with Allah, then you may get something that you didn't want. You will get according to your behavior. You're going off track, you will get someone who's way off track. Or someone who, if you are off track, cannot, you know, cannot go with you because they want to be on track. And eventually there will be a separation, which is not very lovely. So then the first thing is what? Taqwa of Allah. Now, secondly, the idea of marriage in Islam, and like Christianity and many other religions, is highly, highly recommended and encouraged. The Prophet ﷺ spoke to the Sahaba according to Hadith of Ibn Mas'ud, which is Sahih. Ya ma'ashar al-shabab, man istata'a minkum al-ba'ata falyatazawwaj. Speaking to youngsters, youth, all oh, young men, whoever amongst you can afford it, let him get married. And it doesn't mean that you have to be a graduate and you have to have a house furnished and you have to have two cars in your you know, garage. No, 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 no. Once you're able to pay for rent for yourself and your spouse and provide it with food and clothing, you're ready to go. So for the parents who have children who are in an environment where they have to deal with a lot of fitna and marriage is a solution, help them out. Help them out. Let them get married. It is better for them. This is the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Rather than keeping them away from marriage, then they have girlfriends and so on and so forth, and they are destroyed before they ever get married. If you're able to help them out, let it happen. Let's not stick to some cultural teachings which oppose the ease of Islam. Islam is easy. The culture is complicated and difficult. No, you must have this. You must, some cultures you cannot marry unless you're 30 years old and above. What if you died at the age of 29? What if you didn't live to up to 30? Let the people live their lives. In Islam, once you reach puberty, you're ready to go. Even if you didn't reach puberty, you're ready to go. You can consummate the marriage at the age of puberty. That's how easy Islam is. So if we understood this, things will be beautiful. Now, why uh, or what do you look for in a woman? And sisters, what do you look for in a man? The Prophet ﷺ said, تُنْكَحُ الْمَرْأَ لِأَرْبَعْ لِمَالِهَا وَحَسَبِهَا وَجَمَالِهَا وَلِدِينِهَا فَظْفَرْ بِذَاتِ الدِّينِ تَرِبَتْ يَدَاكْ Now, uh, and the hadith as the scholars say applies to both men and women. He said though in this hadith, a woman is married for four things. Usually, usually, the woman is married for four qualities or four characteristics. Either her fulus, she got a lot of money, and the brother says, you know, it would be wonderful if I married the sister, I don't have to work as hard, she can spend on me, which is not okay, because usually it's you the one spending on her, even if she's uh, filthy rich. It's still your responsibility to spend on her, she doesn't have to give you a halala, not even a riyal. She can wave the riyal like this at you, and when you try to grab it, she put it in her pocket. I don't have to give it to you, you have to spend on me. That's Islamic. Now if she's nice, and she wants to share some of her wealth, like Khadija radiallahu shared with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, alhamdulillah, but don't look for that. Secondly, lihasabiha, her lineage. She may be from a, you know, a family that is uh, honorable and respectable among the people, so you think by, you know, it's connections now. You marry a sister because, you know, you want to get some connections, and similarly the sister may marry a man for connections, usually for citizenship, Right? She lives in the country, maybe I can become an American, you know, blah, blah, blah. They don't even want to get married. So it's all a bunch of fake marriages, you know, which Islam doesn't really like. Uh, otherwise, her beauty, right? Uh, and that is, is, is okay as long as it doesn't uh, overwhelm the rest of the things. Where, uh, as, uh, you know, a sister is beautiful, her brother is handsome, but he's busted religiously. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said at the end, walidiniha, for her religious commitment, then he said, Choose the one who is religiously committed, may your hands be rubbed with dust. Meaning, may you prosper. May you prosper. Choose the one that is religiously committed. How do you know she's religiously committed? Allah says, فَالصَّالِحَاتُ قَالِتَاتٌ حَافِظَاتٌ لِلْغَيْبِ بِمَا حَفِظَ اللَّهِ So the righteous women are devoutly obedient to Allah and their husbands. And they safeguard what Allah would have them guard in the absence of their husbands. She's a woman that when you leave the house, you don't have to worry. You don't have to install a security camera outside, and you don't have to buy special recorders which only record when noise is made, and you don't have to tell the neighbor, hey, you know, keep an eye on my door. None of that stuff. Billah, imagine what kind of life is, this is. The man goes you know, to work and the whole time he's worried. A righteous woman does not put her husband in this position, period. He leaves home as if he's home. 
And the wife feels the same way about her husband. When he goes out, she knows that he fears Allah Azza wa Jal. So there's this religious commitment. Otherwise, life is, is hectic. If the husband and wife don't have these qualities, how will the marriage be sound? There will always be worries and concerns about what possibly could be happening, potentially could be happening. So it's an obligation on us to fear Allah Azza wa Jal for the marriage to be successful. So let us get in. Engagement. Now engagement is a cultural thing by the way. It, it has its basis in the Sunnah. The Prophet Sallallahu was engaged to Aisha before he married her. Uh, some people go through engagement first and some people go directly through marriage. Whichever one you like, that's fine. However, we must understand engagement is unlike marriage. Meaning, she is not your wife and you are not her husband. Because many people have a misunderstanding. They get engaged and they say, okay, let's try each other out. So they go out to dinner, they go to the corniche, they spend time with each other, they're on the phone all day, chatting on, you know, online. They're engaged. This is haram. She is a stranger to you. You are a stranger to her. Engagement does not mean marriage. It means that you have some, you know, there's a potential of this marriage taking place. You, you know, you're waiting for something, usually waiting for something, you're finishing your school, she's finishing her school, you wait, you're waiting to get a job, something along the lines that allow you to wait some time. And she's not yours, you're not hers. They may look elsewhere. It's only an engagement. It's very important because some people go overboard and the way they have, you know, their uh, relationships as engaged couple, or even not even a couple, potential couple. So, brothers and sisters, engagement is unlike marriage. You're still strangers in Islam. That leads us to the other discussion of what? Something which I don't have. Engagement ring. And let me include ahead of time the wedding ring. Because it's going to come later in the wedding. But I might as well address them simultaneously. Engagement rings and wedding rings are not allowed in Islam. Why? Because the origin of this particular uh, behavior or this, uh, this, uh, this uh, feature of marriage or whatever you like to call it actually has its Christian roots. In fact, what they used to do among some of the Trinitarian Christians, it may not be among all Christians, the man will bring the engagement ring, he will put it before in, in front of the thumb of the woman, you say, in the name of the father, then, uh, I'm sorry, the left hand, in, name, in the name of the father, in the name of the son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, then he will place the actual wedding ring on the fourth finger. And that fourth finger is called Vena Amores, which is the vein of love, which they believe is the vein connected to the heart. So by placing the ring there, this will increase the possibility of this marriage to be successful. What do we call this in Islam? Shirk. Shirk. A ring, usually golden ring. Huh? Not allowed for a Muslim man under any circumstances. So this idea, because it's Christian, and this is in the book of Sheikh Albani, rahimahullah, has, you cannot do it. If you've had an engagement ring, uh, where's the best market here for, you know, gold and silver? You better visit them soon. Visit them soon. Or do sell it and buy something else with it. You cannot be wearing an engagement ring or a wedding ring. Un-Islamic has a whole bunch of... The fact that some people don't believe that today does not change the fact that it, the, the origin of it is that. Once the origin is something that the non-Muslims have and it, it, it has certain belief amongst them, that will exclude us from the picture automatically. Now, wearing a ring is allowed in Islam.